we're talking about making money on the internet. No, not by talking about the great people over at NordVPN or by selling hint of toxic health products to subscribers. Instead, we're talking about the new European idea of taxing large websites that's spreading across the globe. This new approach would tax Amazon, Facebook, and Google at their points of sale rather than at the location they're headquartered. America, the country where most of these companies are headquartered and a nation founded on the principle of European tax evasion, is not a big fan of this new idea. Hey, only we can tax our internet companies. We don't, but we reserve the right to. Now this is triggering talk of opening up a new front in America's recent web of trade wars, this time with European countries. Now I realize that, wow, that's a lot of information to just dump on someone. So let's start small. What is it that Europe actually wants to do? Well, the idea is to shift taxation to the places where users of online services are located, rather than the usual approach of focusing on where the companies base their regional headquarters or book their earnings. Turns out, if you're buying something online in most of the world, you could be using another country's rewards card. I mean, if you looked at the largest website tax payments, you'd think that the tech capitals of the world were the Cayman Islands and Ireland. The biggest factor in choosing where to headquarter your regional headquarters for the company is where taxes are cheapest. Now, This leaves us with a dilemma for many countries. If you're a country where your citizens are being exposed to paid ads, paying subscriptions, or buying items online, and another country is collecting the taxes off of that, well, you're probably going to want to change something. This is particularly true considering the last few months. Fiscal authorities staring at a gaping budget shortfalls from Cabrera to Copenhagen are looking for any form of commerce and consumption they can tax. Digital revenue is becoming a more and more likely target. Now this raises a bit of a tricky issue because with these new taxes being considered, we're not talking about corporate taxes anymore, but rather a sort of sales tax. Some thorny issues still remain, such as how exactly to define these giant tech companies' digital presence based on revenues and not on profits. Your corporate headquarters is still in either some tropical island or Ireland. Talk about an easy choice. So you're still paying their corporate tax rate on corporate profits. What this would do is go in at the point of sale and charge an additional percentage of the value generated from sales on top of those corporate taxes. Now, This is easy to do with Amazon and other companies that well, sell things, but gets a little bit weird when you come to selling people's data or advertising. There's no good answer here, but French tax collectors propose to tax internet companies proportional to their digital presence in the country relative to the rest of the world. That data you sold was a quarter French citizens, so Macron gets a cut of that quarter of your revenue. You gotta wet your beak with that Cambridge Analytica money. So what's the defense of the current system? Well, it's essentially America saying so many of these websites functioning around the world are American companies. These taxes, because of that, are arbitrary attacks on American industries. From Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin's perspective, it would be like a country announcing a sales tax on champagne. Sure, it only comes from the Champagne region of France. But it's not discriminatory because no matter where you import it from, well, you're going to have to pay the tax. I think we've been pretty clear that we think that the digital tax is discriminatory in nature. And uh, you know, if, uh, if people want to just arbitrarily put taxes on, uh, on our digital companies, we'll consider arbitrarily putting taxes on car companies. This mentality sees a digital tax as a tariff punishing the bottom line of specifically American companies. Of course, a glaring problem with this mentality is that, well, other countries have websites too. French officials say about 30 companies from the US, China, Germany, the UK, and France would be affected, including Uber, Airbnb, and Booking.com. Who taught the rest of the world about creating websites? Curse you, Wix! 
You kind of have to ignore the fact that this tax applies uniformly to companies in Europe, non-American companies outside of Europe, and American companies. Instead, you have to assume the mentality that America is so vastly dominant in all things internet that in reality this tax is all about us. To that end, America has launched a section 301 investigation, which allows us to apply retaliatory tariffs. In practice, this means that we're now going to start calculating how much money these countries will be making taxing American websites and impose retaliatory tariffs to recover that same amount of money in damages. Take for example France's digital tax. America predicts it will cost our companies $2.4 billion next year. So, the United States Trade Representative issued a preliminary list of products from France with an estimated 2018 import value of $2.4 billion, on which to impose additional tariffs of up to 100%. That's right, somehow America found a way to make French goods even more expensive. Similarly, reciprocal trade threats are being made across Europe and more broadly the globe. The United States Trade Representative says countries that have either adopted or are considering digital taxes include Austria, Brazil, the Czech Republic, France, India, Indonesia, Italy, Spain, Turkey, the UK, and most recently Thailand. America is really playing tariff whack-a-mole against these new laws, and more and more holes keep popping up. Governments are calculating whether the long term costs of Trump's tariff threats outweigh the potential for billions of dollars in new digital revenue. Whew, boy, America is about to put tariffs on quite a few countries in defense of our tech companies' revenue streams. Or, as Donald Trump put it, if anyone's going to take advantage of American companies, it's going to be us. The latest update on this story came out last week when the United States pulled out of a more than 130 country negotiation designed to create a universal digital tax. France's finance minister says a US move to pull out of talks over a new digital tax is a provocation. It seems that America's strategy here is, rather than negotiate with a collective 130 odd nations over digital taxes, we're going to engage in direct economic warfare with any country trying to put on their own digital tax. Of course, this has led to a 10% tax in Indonesia, a 1% tax in India, come on guys, you're worth more than that, and a whole spectrum of regulations and changes in between. As some point out, this patchwork method of taxation that's emerging might actually end up being more expensive for websites. Except if America can take away any benefits from the taxes using equivalent tariffs on exports. For YouTube communities specifically, not only does the future of goods hang in the balance, but also the future of monetizing content. As now in Europe and these other countries, the government is getting a cut of ad revenue. Don't expect to see me pivoting towards the Indonesian market anytime soon. 10% of revenue, whoo wee. Thank you and well with America preparing to tariff at least 9 countries across the globe about this, this is definitely not all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, first I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.